Hey everyone, it's Cyrano, and today I'm going to do an in-game review of Anno 2070. Now this game's just come out, and it's a city builder, and if you've played any Anno games or any of the Impressions games, like Caesar, you'll definitely know what this game's like. You generally have to build up production chains, and by doing that, you satisfy the needs of your people, they upgrade, and they pay more taxes, etc, etc. Now, all the previous NO games have been in the past, but this one here is in the future. I like it. There's only so much you can do about remaking an old game in, the, in the history over and over again, because you've only got so much source material. As soon as you go into the future, there's no limits. They can do whatever they want, and I think they've really succeeded with this one. Now, first thing I have to say is the game does have online authentication when you log into the game, but once you're logged in, it's not always on. So for example, my internet went down, I just went into offline mode automatically, and as soon as my internet went back up, I went back into online mode. Now, there are advantages to being actually connected, it's not just a DRM system. You have an online profile, so for example, you have access to chat, you have access to multiplayer, and because you're already online, it, it's a very integrated system. It's easy to get into a cooperative game with someone else, or even a competitive game. Now, because you're online, you have your own profile here, so you have a few things. Configuration, for example, you can choose your portrait, your color from online multiplayer matches, and the title that you might have unlocked. Career progression is essentially EXP, so anyone who's played an RPG will know what this is like. As you level up with a certain faction, you unlock more bonuses to that faction. So, essentially, you have everything with a faction during the game. What this does is when you unlock it, you get bonuses to that. You also have achievements. So, achievements work very well in a game like this where you'll finish the story and you might go into a continuous game and it gives you something to focus on to try and get done. It adds a lot of life to the game. Now your art configuration is another part of the online system is you have a persistent arc that you can use in any of the non-campaign missions. So for example I've got a couple of upgrades here that I picked up during a continuous game which I can carry on to the next continuous game or a multiplayer match for example. Now there's certain upgrades, they might be to the eco side, they might be to the Tyco side. So generally you do have to choose what you're going to do. You can load up quite a lot of these bonuses and then just select the ones you want on a mission per mission basis. And you generally have to research a lot of these as you play through a continuous game. So it does give you an incentive to play a long continuous game where you're actually still upgrading your arc in this game even if it might not be a competitive match. These are my statistics. Just tells you what you've been doing, what population you've got. Screenshots if you've taken any. And the reward system. So these rewards get unlocked as you complete achievements. As you can see, I've got a few unlocked here. But there's still a whole lot more I can unlock. Okay, you also have mail. You get mail from the characters. For example, there's a lot of online activities that you do and every time something happens, if you haven't logged on for a while, you get an email to keep yourself up to date. Okay, the data log is just the FAQ. It tells you everything you need to know about the game. It's very in-depth, but there's no real tutorial on telling you how to play the game. You might find that you need to play the game a few times just to figure out what you're doing. Okay, so now you have the world statistics as well. Since we're connected, it just tells you what everyone else is doing. So, there's a lot more eco population here than there is Tyco. So, obviously, it seems the bulk of people are playing the ecos. Okay, here we've got uh, the votes. I find that the Eden Initiative usually is on top. Most people seem to be playing them. Okay, so here we're back at the main screen. Now, a part of that online DRM is it's not just DRM, you have other activities that make you feel connected to the whole world. Eno makes the game feel like the whole global warming problem is a global problem. So when you're playing this game, 
you connect it to other people, and you get to participate in an online environment. Retina scan positive. The president of the World Council can now be elected. So, for example, here we can choose who we want to be the president of the World Council. Each one of them gives different bonuses. Generally, you might want to find out which ones work good for you, and then vote for them. Your loyalty is exactly and down the bottom here, you can see who's voted for who. So currently, the scientists have the most votes, then the Edens, and then the Tycho's. The Senate has received the following applications. Okay, so this is the Senate, and the Senate is sort of like the leader one that we just did. However, with the Senate, it has a, a game overall effect. So, for example, the current bonus is eco balance is improved on all islands. So, the last person who voted was it was the winner was the ecos, and so we all have an eco balance bonus. No matter who you voted for, the entire online population gets this bonus. And at the end of the week, we all vote for a new one. Okay, and you can see here, there's new effects here. Different from the ones before. And I think I will go with this one. I never doubted your loyalty. Okay. Current mission parameters loaded. In addition to that, you also have these daily quests, which get you EXP with the factions that you saw before. Generally, it's the same quest every time, however, depending on who you choose to represent will get you your EXP bonus with that particular faction. There was a world event that just finished uh, called the Atomic Terror, I believe, where there were three missions, and, and as you played through them and completed them, you got points, and those points then unlocked um, EXP for everyone. So you got to stage one and everyone got like 50 EXP stage 2 and everyone got 100 it was a, a bar that just went up and up and up and when it reached max everyone got 200 EXP and you also get achievement bonuses for uh, participating in it the game has about 12 missions spread over 3 chapters now one thing I have to say about the game is even though it's about global warming Essentially, global warming's already happened and the debate is over, essentially. You have your two factions and as you play through the game, the game doesn't push the agenda of any one faction. It doesn't, like, you'd think a game like this would push the eco faction, um, but it doesn't, it doesn't. The, the Tycos aren't the bad guys, the Ecos aren't the good guys, and in fact you can play with all three factions in one game. Uh, they all work together, and in fact, using all three factions gets you access to all the buildings so then you can create a civilization that is a blend of both the factions which tends to be much more powerful than say just sticking to one or the other so the game doesn't take sides it doesn't try to push any political messages okay so in addition to the 12 um, or so campaign missions there are also single missions seven of those one you have to unlock with achievements and this is just sort of your continuous game with a targeted effect that you want to go for so Selected mission objective. you have to build a monument in this one but this is a warlike map so you'll be under attack while you're building this monument where transfer of current mission data completed. this one here is more of a peaceful kind of mission where you have to build a monument just based on trying to build up so, there's many different options here. The computer can be really aggressive, sending 20 ships at you at a time to wipe you out. Um, you can play any of these in co-op. This is part of the online game. You click on a mission like this and you can just start as multiplayer. You can start any of these as multiplayer, you don't just have to start a continuous game. And then you have your normal continuous games. There's presets here, easy, normal, and hard, but even if you go into a hard one, you can customize everything for yourself anyway. So you can make it as hard or easy as you want it to be. Alright, so here we have a game 
that I prepared earlier. Now, the graphics engine it uses the same graphics engine as the previous Anno, but things have been buffed up a bit. Warning. Seems I'm under attack here. Yeah, they can attack. handle it. Now, so for example, with the graphics engine, the mountains here, for example, they look much more realistic. The the older Anno used more of a colourful palette. Um, I wouldn't really say it was more cartoony, but it just was more uh, colourful. So this game is more down to earth and gritty and more realistic looking. Now I have one main island here, and I have buildings from all three factions. So you have your Ecos, you have your Tycos, and you have your scientists up here. Now. The aim of the game, if you've never played Anno before, is you've got to make your people happy. And the happier they are, the more tax they pay. So, if you look in the bottom right hand corner here, you have... The quality of life here Thank you. Bad. They have their requirements here. So, for example, I need more liquor, because my liquor is not filling up quick enough. So, where are we? Where are we? Alright, I can't find it. Anyway, as you can see up here is my farms. They're producing hamburgers, for example, down here. They're making sushi. Solar power plants. You've got uh, kerosene being made over here from my like, jet fighters. All we have to do and is as you make these people happier, they pay more taxes and then they'll upgrade to the next level, which then has a whole new range of requirements that need to be f fulfilled. And once they're fulfilled, they will upgrade again. So it, it, there's four levels or so that they upgrade, and each one pays more tax and it unlocks more buildings. Um, as you can see down here, I have an, a farming island. And once these things get farmed and produced here, you create a trading route. And so I might want to go from here to here. You know, see, so pick up all these things, drop them all off here. So. In the aim, aim of the game is you'll have probably one main island and then you'll have lots of sub islands around which then deliver all the goods to your main island. Now, Eno's always had islands in it, but with the global warming and the oceans rising theme, the island nature of the game really makes sense in this game. With a persistent map like this, you get to play with other people easily. So, for example, I might have one, one island, a competitor or a co-op player might have another island and you'll play together without needing to worry about separate maps like other city building games and because of this the combat can be more effective as well you have a whole range of ships it's generally a rock paper scissors system one ship will fire at air one fires at water one fires at subs and you need the right ship to combat the right kind of enemy now you do have underwater combat with submarines and you do have air so for example, I have some aircraft around here, there we go, One. enemy aircraft are incoming and we're going to shoot them down. Now, it's not real time strategy kind of combat, but the combat is leaps and bounds better than the previous NO where you had to use ground forces which had terrible controls, in this you have air units and they can freely fly around and attack whatever they want without having to micromanage so heavily. Seems this guy's just going to fly into my battle fleet anyway. The graphics in this game are pretty much the highest I've ever seen in a city builder. It's a joy to watch, and it's a joy to build a nice big city because the game represents it so well. You wanted to see me? So, for example, here you have a myriad of power options you have to manage and eco options in addition to your normal city building game that you had in NO1404. So, for example, I've got hydro power here, which gives me 500 power. I've got where are we? Because I think I destroyed all the other things on this island because the hydro just gave me so much. See so over here I have where are you, where are you? Solar power. 
and wind farms as you can see here on the sea area. I also had a nuclear power plant uh, for a time before I got the hydro power and that's essentially the biggest power building in the game. The game also features an underwater system as you can see here. Now it is effectively in the old game you had your Orients and they had their own little islands. Essentially you, you consider these underwater islands as the new Orient Islands. They're small, you can't do much on them, but it it adds so much to the game just being able to go underwater. It, it's I would have loved if they make another game like this where it, it's purely about underwater base building. Um, there's not many games which, which go into such an area and it's a very unique part of the game that sets it apart. Each island has its own fertility, so one under, underwater island might not be the same as the next. Same with the upper water islands. And effectively a ship just comes to a, um, an oil rig sort of thing, sitting up on the top of the, the water to collect anything from the underwater island that gets shipped back to your main. I really like this game. I really wish there was an offline mode, just in case you didn't have access to the internet. Uh, however, the online mode does add a lot to the game. Um, I've been able to play multiplayer matches without any trouble and I would have to give the game a 9 out of 10. This is Cyrano and thanks for watching.